Hello and welcome to our 2020 MBR Trail Bike of the Year test. This year we've split the test into two different categories with shop bought models and consumer direct brands. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the direct to consumer bikes. So if you want to find out about the shop bought brands, then do watch our second Trail Bike of the Year video. Now, before I introduce all of these bikes, I want to tell you a little bit about our test procedure. Now, as we do with every single model we review, all of these bikes here have been weighed and measured in our workshop. This means that you can accurately compare the geometry without having to rely on information supplied by the manufacturer. We've also measured the vertical rear wheel travel on each of the bikes and to create a level playing field to really allow us to focus on the performance and handling of each bike, we've fitted them all with control tires. Now we've returned all of these bikes back to their original spec, but for the test we chose to run a Maxxis Minion DHF 2.5 up front for its blend of cornering grip and rolling speed. And on the back we chose to run the Maxxis Minion DHR2 for its climbing and braking traction. Because modern trail bikes are so capable, we chose to run the Exo Plus casing for extra puncture protection, and we chose an intermediate 3C Max Terra compound for its blend of speed and grip. Coming direct from Andorra is the Commensal TR29 Ride. Now this is 2,699 euros. PB, how was it in this year's test? Because we restructured this test this year and it's a slightly cheaper price point, this is obviously a bit of a step down from the bike that we tested last year. That's quite a cheaper specification. So that was the British edition, which was about three and a half thousand pounds. This is about 2,300 pounds, depending on the exchange rate. So what have we compromised on to get it at this price point? Well, what we haven't compromised on is the frame. It's exactly the same. But you'll notice that it has a cheaper RockShox Revelation fork and has slightly different tires on it, slightly cheaper specification. That's probably had a big impact on how the bike rides, is it? Definitely. Uh, the fork is the biggest thing because last year we had a Fox factory top end fork on it and that allowed you to ride the fork a bit more because it was a lot more sophisticated. It was a lot better performance. This fork is okay in certain situations, but because the rear, rear of the bike's only got 130 mil of travel, you've tended to ride the fork a bit more on last year's bike and that was really good. This year, if you do that, the fork gets a bit overwhelmed. Okay, so say I'm riding this bike, where am I gonna notice that difference? I think, the, and obviously the, the place you're gonna notice it the most is when you're riding hard and fast on some sort of gnarly terrain. And the reason why it's not gonna be as good a performance is because the damper in this fork isn't as good as obviously the Fox Factory fork. It's just got a motion control damper and it's quite simple. I mean, it's effective at lower speeds and when you're not hitting stuff really hard, but when you get really gnarly on this bike, it just gets overwhelmed. And the, I guess that's more of a problem because it's such a capable chassis, isn't it? The geometry, yeah. the, the rear suspension, it begs you to go harder and faster, doesn't it? Definitely. And you're suddenly encouraged to go into a section flat out, but the fork just sort of, it just gets out of shape so quickly. You just suddenly get to this point where it's not that you can't control a bike, it just suddenly becomes a bit, you know, a little bit nervous and a bit of like, it just, it's out, it gets out of its depth so soon. And was there anything else that hampered the performance? Yeah, the tires. The Schwaber tires, they just a harder compound than any other tire that we've got on test. I mean, the other three bikes all had Maxxis tires. These ones just a bit pingy. And obviously you want that grip and traction in that, those gnarly situations. So obviously we, we changed the tires for the test, but if you're buying it, it's something you're gonna have to consider, isn't it? I would definitely upgrade the front tires right away to something softer compound, just more traction. Because the, the Magic Mary is a, is a good, tread pattern isn't it totally yeah it's good all year round it's good in the winter yeah. good good clearance and it's got amazing edge grip it's just that this compound is just too hard for this bike 
What, what about the back end? Last year, we criticised it for being quite wide, catching our feet. Was that still an issue this year? It was. You, it's, there's two things. You catch your heels on a chainstay, um, sort of drop out, and you also catch your calves, or if you wear knee pads, on the, the sort of rocker link. And that's a bit of an issue. We thought Commonsol might just tweak the frame to get rid of that, that sort of problem. So it didn't, you know, like if you've got big feet and, and it just sort of gets in the way. And sometimes your feet actually get hooked underneath the stay because it's so wide. Mm. And that's because of the calip rear caliper being inside the chain stay, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. I mean, it's a, and that's a nice touch. I mean, it's, mm. it's neat out of the way. You know, it might be a little bit stiff, I don't know, but it's just it's a, a neat design. It's just the compromise is the stays are much wider on this bike than any other. So was that uh, everything about the common soul or? No, there was one other thing that it really bugs me personally and, it, and I think it would bug a customer as well. And it's because as a Lev C post, and it's a great post, but it does this, it pulls up with this knocking noise. So whenever you pick the bike up to put it on a work stand or if you're doing an uplift, it just that pulls up and it's just, it's just irritating. This doesn't need to be like this. Yeah, there's not many posts that do that anymore, are there? No, I mean, it might have been, a th I mean, this has been like this for, I don't know how many years, and I just wish that KS would sort this out. Okay, so a great chassis let down by a few compromises on the components, but being the, the cheapest bike on test means we might have a bit of money to sp left over to spend on upgrades. Definitely, yeah, there's about 200 quid, you could get a charger damper, Another 50, 60 quid, you can get some better tyres. And that'll, that'll sort it out. So this bike won our Trail Bike of the Year test a couple of years ago, but it's been steadily sliding down the rankings ever since. So why is that, PB? The simple answer is the other bikes have just got better. And this one basically st stood still, hasn't it? Nothing's changed on it. The specification changes, but the fundamental things with the bike haven't changed whatsoever. It's exactly the same frame we tested three years ago. So what are the major problems with this bike then? Well, it's two things. First thing, the dropper post, you couldn't get the, the post low enough in the frame. So basically, you either had to run a short travel dropper or you had to ride around with your saddle too high just because it, you couldn't get it low enough in the frame. And this year, um, Vitus has sort of changed it slightly so that this, is, this post got a little bit more clearance. So there is a bit more space. But um, one of the other things, the BB's too high. So those two things together just give you a really perched riding position, is that right? In some situations, yeah. If you're just bombing along on single track, bike feels great. Totally, you know, manoeuvrable, nippy, feels like the other bikes. It's just when you go to somewhere that's steeper terrain, your weight just comes all forward and it just feels a little bit nervous. And that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. And is there any other aspect of the geometry that, um, that accentuates that feeling? Well, it has got long chain stays as well. So that throws your weight a little bit forward onto the front end as well. And it's just quite subtle, but it just, you can sense it when you're descending steeper terrain. So it sounds like the geometry needs a bit of updating, but what about the rest of the bike? It's still a great specification for the money. I mean, you still get a lot of bike. They dropped the price this year by 200 quid, but they did put a slightly cheaper fork on it. I mean, it's just got this performance series, which I think last year had an, an elite series fork on it. It's still a good fork, it's just, it's, the performance is just a step below what we've seen previously. So in the four bikes, there were two with carbon frames and two with full alloy frames. This is one of the alloy frames. Did you really notice that when you were out riding? In terms of the weight, no. I think the, the weights are very similar across the... I mean, there is a bit of a difference between the bikes, but in terms of... The, this has got quite a good ride feel to this frame for aluminium. I mean, it feels pretty good. So what are the highs and lows of the spec on this bike? A lot of pluses and minuses. The first thing that's really good, it's got these amazing tyres. Got three C tyres, has a guy on the front and a DHR on the rear. Really comfortable saddle, which I like, it's good for me. Uh, but it grips are rock hard. Brakes are not too, they're not that powerful. And they've got that sh a little bit of a Shimano on-off feel sometimes. Drive chain's great, 
12 speed. A little bit noisy though, a little bit like the drivetrain on the uh, Radon, it was a bit noisy in certain gears. But overall, spec is, you know, on the positive side, really good stuff on this bike. So it sounds like it wouldn't take much to bring this bike back into contention then, maybe a few tweaks to the geometry and stuff? Yeah, I think just lower the BB, maybe just try and work that out with a chainstay length and it would, you could easily have, you know, back at the top of the tree, no problem. So in runner-up spot, we have the YT Jeffsy Comp. Now, this was the winner of last year's Trail Bike of the Year test, wasn't it? It was indeed, yeah. I mean, some obvious reasons it's the winner. Just amazing, amazing build for the money. And it's the same again this year. Now, it was a standout bike last year at that price point with a full carbon frame, wasn't it? But there were a few niggles with it. Yeah, there was. Uh, last year's bike, pretty much the same frame, um, but it had a Fox 34 fork on it. Bit more flexible didn't really fit with the bike that much. And also, when we measured the bike uh, last year, it had less than the, the claimed amount of travel. This year, it actually had a little bit more. Bonus. And also, the fork's got more travel now. It was a 140 fork last year, and now it's 150. But also, it's a 36 as well, so a stiffer unit. Yeah, definitely a better overall package. More in keeping with this sort of the attitude of the bike, really. And it actually feels like a proper trail bike now, whereas last year, it felt a little bit like a, an XC bike with just a little bit plus, a little bit plus something. It was kind of disjointed, wasn't it, with the front end being a little bit noodly, but the, the rest of the frame being really solid. There's, that's a double-edged sword. I mean, it's really efficient when you're pedaling. It's great, the stiff frame. But in some situations, having a really, really stiff frame isn't, isn't to your advantage, really. And especially in, like, wet conditions. I mean... You want a little bit of give in the frame. You get a bit of feel, if you know what, you know, if you know what I'm saying. So you saying the Jeffsy frame is too stiff? I would say it was a little bit too stiff, yeah. Especially compared to the other three bikes in this test. I mean, that translates directly to the ride feel, you know, and, the, and it was sort of one of the reasons why this bike isn't the best bike in this test. Okay, we'll get onto that when we talk about the winner, but, what really stood out on this bike when you were riding it? Everything. I mean, look at it. It's like full cabin frame. It's got a better seat post this year as well. They, they took off that E13, had a fixed position thing. And this has got infinite adjustment. It's just their in-house post, but that's way better. It's got better tires, I think. But the problem is they're the Maxxis tires, but they're, they're, they're slightly harder compound, which is okay on the, on the rear, but you actually want a, a softer compound on the front it's got amazing brakes, good drivetrain, all the componentry is top notch. Would you say it's more on the enduro side of trail or more on the XC side of trail? Uh, it's, it's still more of an XC bike. It's, it hasn't got that sort of capability of a big enduro trail bike, but it's still a great fun bike to ride. Okay, so let's get this straight. You get a full carbon frame, you get some amazing components, and yet it still didn't win the test. Yeah. That's true, yeah. I mean, it's a nine out of 10. It's got a better fork and all of that, all of the things we just talked about. But tire's not great, grips are too hard, saddle's too hard, but really it came down to the ride feel of our test winning bike. Just was, it was just an extra step above and that made the difference between a nine and a 10. Okay, well, let's check it out. And here we have the winner of the 2020 MBR Trail Bike of the Year test in the direct sales category. It's the Radon Slide Trail 9. Now this is the first time we've had a Radon in the test and it's gone straight in at number one. Yeah, totally. Amazing bike for the money. I mean, just look at it. Just looks fantastic. Gold, first place. Uh, I mean, so much to talk about. But 
It's more expensive than the YT and it doesn't come with a full carbon frame. So how come it's better? So yeah, if we just take that frame thing for, for a moment, just look at that. This has only got carbon front end, aluminum down the back and the YT Jeff is full carbon. But this bike is 500 grams lighter. So could you feel that on the trail? You don't feel the weight as a thing, but what you notice is this bike has got a better ride feel than the YT. It's more compliant, so it feels more comfortable, it's more responsive, more agile, and it's just more fun. So what you're saying is it's a, there's a little bit more flex in the frame, and that means you don't need as much energy to hold it online, is that what you're saying? I would say so. In some situations, when it's really rough, that extra give in the frame allows you to negotiate rougher sections a lot easier. So it's a kind of calmer ride? I would say so, yeah. That, I mean, you know, it has very similar componentry, so, but it just, it feels so different. Okay, is, is there more to it than that? Yeah, so the 36 fork Elite, it's got a better damper in it, so more composed when you're riding rough terrain. It has softer compound tyres, so you've got more grip, more, again, more damping when, you, when you're really pushing the envelope. And that ride feel just, it allows you to just ride five, 10% quicker than on the YT. And that was really the difference between these two bikes. And what about climbing? I mean, it's just, you know, it's just efficient. You know, it's like all of these bikes climb really amazing. You know, we just, they get to the top, you know, they're not, they don't feel sluggish, they all feel precise. And this bike's the same, you know, and you, and you can lock the shock out if you want. The Radon, it's got a Shimano drivetrain as well, which is um, slightly sort of bucking the trend. Yeah, that was the only little hiccup with this bike. The drivetrain was quite noisy. Don't know why that was. It was just in certain gears, it was just a bit more, you know, the, the SRAM drivetrains on some of the other bikes were smoother, quieter. This was, it was, if, you know, it changed gear, no problem. It just was more noisy. How about the Magura brakes? We don't get many bikes in the UK with those, do we? No, we don't. You don't see it. It's, it's not a common spec on bikes. These are really powerful. Four piston brakes, amazing. But the way the lever is, there's quite a lot of flex in the lever. And because it's got a radial piston, the lever comes quite far into the handlebar. So sometimes you, you feel like you have to grab for the brakes a little bit. So it's a little bit different to what you'd, the kind of feel you get from a SRAM or a Shimano. Yeah, they're really, positive and progressive. The Magura is just a little bit, I don't know, it's just a little bit looser feeling on the brake okay. lever. So the Radon, like the YT, has got a flip chip to adjust the geometry. Which setting did you run it in? Well, because this bike's got a, a little bit high BB, we put it in the low setting and we left it there throughout the test. Okay, so is there anything you'll change on this bike? Oh yeah, I'd get a saddle with some padding because this is like, for a man of my age, this isn't a, <laughs> isn't a very comfortable saddle. And while I was at the shop, I'd get some grips with softer rubber because these are rock hard. And you, you know, if you don't wear gloves, which you don't, your hands slip off. So really pretty minor quibbles on that. Yeah, you can change those things really easily. And, and uh, that's true of the YT as well. You can change those contact point components. What you, can't, what you don't need to change, which you can't change on a YT, is the ride feel. So there you have the winner of the MBR Trail Bike of the Year test 2020 in the direct sales category. It's the Radon Slide Trail 9 narrowly beating the YT Jeffsy Comp. But either bike would be a fantastic purchase. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.